what will the treatment of these diseases look like in the future? Well, as I told you, the treatment uh, uh, in the future will be more and more natural food intervention. These are not my words. These are words of a group of uh, Canadian researchers who a few weeks ago demonstrated that with a particular probiotic yogurt they were able to increase cv 4 by 40 cells a month instead of 90 cells a year as you expect from antiretroviral therapy and they call this natural food intervention these are their words not my words i think that natural food intervention will be applied with different aspects of course not uh, the same food for every uh, disease the same food for no. every condition will be applied to all these uh, different conditions that share the systemic inflammation and the pure nutritional status so uh, very shortly i think that the future is cannot be in drugs drugs are very helpful to solve an acute situation i'm not against drugs of course exactly drugs uh, could be extremely helpful but cannot be taken for life exactly and uh, so natural food intervention with food that are designed starting from natural components but then you need a very clever design of foods that become medicine that you can prepare in your own kitchen. So this is my opinion. I'm a Kansas farm boy. We're sitting in Wichita, Kansas, surrounded by, this is the grain belt of the United States. I grew up here. And I can tell you that I believe part of my illness started on a farm 200 miles north and west of here when we were using atrazine as a pesticide. And the, the you know, the world is, becoming filled with genetically modified foods and once that starts I, I'm here's the pessimist in me coming out when I hear Americans talking about health care reform they're really talking about insurance reform and I've long argued that if you want to change if you want to improve health care in the United States you'll start with the farm bill because our food is not really food and you're talking about using food to heal makes me think we need food to stay healthy to, to, to keep from getting sick and and I the food we eat today is nothing like the food I ate when I was a, a young person and I was in a hospital when I got through eating there was more plastic on my tray than there was food <laughs> in my stomach you know and I looked at the labels high fructose corn syrup on three out of you know two out of the half the items on the tray and and this is where we're at with food. I don't know how different it is in Italy or in Europe. I think America, once again, is leading the way, but I don't think it's all that different in the Western world on, mm -hmm. on any uh, hemisphere. I regret to disappoint you, but it is different. Uh, our <laughs> You're not disappointing me. I'm glad to hear I may move. You may have a passenger going back. It is different, <laughs> and uh, this does not apply only to Italy, but if you go to Germany, Austria, Switzerland, uh, over there, you really find things that are completely natural. Of course, you cannot avoid the global pollution from Fukushima or from... Okay, you cannot avoid that. But uh, the regulations are very, very strict. Let me just give you this example that exemplifies uh, the difference between Europe and the United States. Let's talk about milk since uh, milk is the starting point for all the fermented milk products that appear to have uh, very beneficial properties and I will talk about this uh, in two days. In Europe, you find raw milk, milk that has been taken from the mammal gland of the cow and put in the bottle. We know absolutely no modification, absolutely no treatment. From the cow to the bottle, one euro, one bottle of one liter or one quart if you prefer. So next to the farm, 
these farms are fully organic, no pesticides, no hormones in the, in the animals, no antibiotics in the animals. So, and the regulations, I tell you, are very, very strict. The problem with Europe is that we suffer of over-regulation. There are too many regulations, and this uh, is maybe it's not so good for the economy, but it's good for health in some aspects. So, there you have animals that receive no antibiotics, no nothing, no hormones, nothing. Therefore, from the economic point of view, uh, it is not very profitable. And from those animals, you have their pure milk that has been subjected to no treatment at all. And next to, to the farm, there is a small house made of wood. You go there, you put one coin or one, one euro, and you can collect one liter or one quart, if you prefer, of raw milk. I understand that this, not only this is not available here, this is forbidden here. It is a crime. It's a crime. So, this gives you an example. And the rest goes like this. So, what uh, for this country is a crime, over there is encouraged by the states, by the health departments. The health department. Uh, we are working and we became very close friends with an Austrian biologist who many, many years ago decided to quit biology and to begin farming. <coughs> and he has now the largest uh, herd of water buffaloes in Austria. And he produces a wonderful uh, buffalo cheese, uh, buffalo cream, uh, all, all this type of uh, uh, buffalo derivatives from buffalo milk. Which, by the way, buffalo milk is uh, ten times better than cow milk. And he is the only one producer in Austria. He imported the buffaloes many, many years ago from India. And so he had a kind of a genetic problem because since the buffaloes are not too many, after a certain number of reproduction, the genetic pool shrinks, and so he needs to have more buffaloes. So I asked him, so why don't you go to Italy, that is a, a bordering Austria, so it's not far away, because there are many buffaloes over there, and so it would be easy for you to find the bulls that could replenish your genetic pool. Say no, never. Say why? What do you have against Italians? We were joking, we were teasing. Say well, I'm nothing against Italians, but Italian buffaloes are vaccinated. It took me a while to understand because, in my opinion, to be vaccinated was something positive. But according to Austrian laws, if a buffalo or a cow is vaccinated, it, it is a somehow manipulated. Mm -hmm. So it is no longer natural. natural. Can you imagine this? I can't, that's all I can do is imagine, yes. Okay. <laughs> so it took us a while to understand why he didn't want to import uh, Italian bulls, buffalo bulls. And he said, because they are vaccinated. And he said, as if they were somehow rotten, somehow infected, somehow. A vaccination in Italy is permitted, uh, but nothing else, nothing else. Well, that's encouraging.